hopeless, but this is very tough stuff. Uh, good luck ripping through this. Thing all the way up. This is not only for protecting the rifle and the optic here, this is also for load bearing. Howdy guys, Rex here. We're trying out the new Eberly stock. This is their new model. I got my rifle in here, I got my scope, I got a fire starting kit, I got a huge amount of food, I got fishing tackle, I even got a bivy sack, I got some shelter, got tripods, bipods, spotting scopes, binoculars, everything I'm gonna need for World War III, minus an igloo. I'll have to build one. So if I'm able to bug out, I will be able to make it out into this Arctic wilderness and die within 20 minutes of cold. <laughs> but no, it's good. It's actually, uh, this pack weighs 73 pounds with the weapon and the ammo. I got 100 rounds down here by my behind for the uh, World War III rifle. It is a little bit heavy of a rifle. You can go with a lighter weight rifle. I chose the precision rifle. I like the uh, 308. Uh, with the Macmillan A5 because it's a very reliable, sturdy platform. It's got that primary arms HUD DMR 3 to 18 on it. I have my carbon fiber tripod here. So if I have to sit down and, you know, get a little bit more elevation and shoot, I can use the stock, the Eberly uh, stock pack as the rear support and the tripod as the front support. And it's not even a bad deal, but with 73 pounds, mind you, I'm a dude with back problems. I just had surgery about a year ago, an L4 and L5. 73 pounds is a lot of weight for a guy like me uh, to add on. And actually, once you get it on, it's not too bad to bear. Like, I don't really feel it on me. Uh, the straps are very comfortable. I got the strap here, here. I got my Mark 23 on the side here. I got my uh, silencer for it on the side. I got my silencer for the rifle on the other side. I got all my peripheral equipment. I'm ready to rock and roll. I even got my 22 pistol with a whole bunch of ammo on top for survival. And so that's pretty cool. Um, if I wanted to, I could loosen up the straps in the back and I could throw in a full Arctic backpack like I have right back here. I could incorporate something like this into here. This doesn't weigh a lot more, but this could also strap into the system as well. And if I want to take a little nap out here in the 37 below right now, I think it is. It's cold. I might even survive for another extra 12 minutes. So, <laughs> but it's not bad at all. Um, totally easy to bear the load. Putting it on is a different deal. Pardon me. Um, typically, even like one of the guys in the service with the rucksacks he got, once you get a huge amount of weight in there, sometimes you'd have way more weight than this. You need a guy or two to help you get it on. So I recommend being smart, set it up on top of something if you got a heavy load, and then get behind it and wrestle it on. And then you don't wanna be trying to pick it up off the ground and bend funny and twist and hurt yourself. But once you get it on, it's not all that bad for weighing as much as it does. Now, of course, you could go lighter, but this is kind of a minimalist pack in all honesty. I could be carrying a lot more water, um, a lot more food. I like keeping the water against my body so that it doesn't freeze. Right now, that water is gonna be frozen in just a couple minutes. 
along with my ears here. Um, so, but uh, you know, that's something you can resupply in the way. You got snow out here. If you're in the desert, you might need to carry more water, so you might have to reconfigure the pack. But let's uh, take a look and see what's actually inside of the pack. I think you guys will dig what we got going on. Okay guys, we're taking a look at the Everly stock bag. Uh, we were lugging this around a little bit earlier in the video. We want to kind of give you a general overview of how we have it packed. You have a general sense of what's in here, but I'm going to give you the general overview of what's kind of packed inside and what the general logic is so that when we get into the next video, the video after this, we'll show you all the details of everything that's going to go in there. And then on the third video, we'll show you how to actually pack it in. This is just a general overview. This bag is set up in a, in a nice way. This is a newer model. This is something that they created to be a bit more lightweight. It is not as modular as some of the previous models, but it's actually simplified. And with some new materials and some uh, handy thinking, they were able to get this in a lot more compact, lightweight fashion. That means you can carry more of the stuff you actually need. Now, my uh, particular configuration here is for, I live in the north, it's very cold, so I got my essentials for where I live. It's going to be different for where you're at. I have my extreme cold weather sleeping bag kit. If you don't have that, you're dead the first night, guaranteed. <laughs> no way you can live without that, really, unless you're really, really a Boy Scout. There's things you can do, but that's going to make life a lot better. Now, I'm going to give you a general overview of the logic used on this bag. Then we'll show you some of the features and how I think it's constructed overall and some of the nice things that I saw that I thought were really smartly designed. In a general sense, minus this, this is the best place this could fit, uh, is right on top. But in a general sense, stuff that's immediately accessible, very quickly accessible, that's like right on top of the bag, right underneath the pouch, is stuff that you would potentially need in a hurry. For example, the rifle is in the back of the bag, and all it is is a couple of clips, and you can just uh, unsnap them and pull it out. We'll show you that in a minute. I have my immediate action emergency trauma kit immediately accessible at the very top of the bag here. So all I have to do is unsnap, un undo it, and I got my trauma kit. Um, other things like my headlamp, I have that pretty accessible in case we uh, need something, you know, if it gets dark, that's important. You do my tripod, a very important part of a system for a precision rifle shooter is the way I have mine configured. And the tripod, uh, you might not realize until you get in the, out in the bush in real life, uh, it's not always nicely mowed lawn like on the shooting range or like at the match. There's bushes, there's shrubs, there's trees, there's rocks in the way. In order to get over the top of that and make a shot on a critical target, a tripod may be very, very handy. So that's one way that it is uh, tied in right on top here so I can whip it out. And when I undo this to get this out of the way of the rifle, this automatically comes off as well. And I have immediate access to not only a giant pillow, a lot of the guys do run around with the shooting pillows. I can use this for that. I can also use the bag as a rest and I can have access to my tripod as well. I also have the bipod attached here. And I did take advantage of a lot of the Molly attachment points for peripheral equipment that I need immediate access to in a fight my laser rangefinder, my loophole RX 2800. I have my silencer for my rifle here, SDN6. I have my silencer for my pistol. I have my full tang cold steel knife and my toe support. All the kind of stuff you're gonna need in a fight and of course my ammunition is here. I got 100 rounds of precision rifle ammo for my, my main rifle, okay? And we do have actually immediately accessible as well the Mark 23 45 pistol by HK. And that's what that silencer is for. This is for perimeter security, okay? Or if you've got an immediate threat that came up close, you got danger close, you don't want to give away your position, you can very covertly and quietly uh, mitigate that threat. Now, one thing to remember about a bug out bag, guys, is everything you need is attached to this bag. So if you grab this out of the back of the truck or out of the back of the car, and you just have to run for the hills, as soon as you get somewhere relatively safe, you're actually going to transfer a lot of this equipment that's in this bag, for example, the sidearm, onto your belt or into your pockets. I would move my socks to my pockets. I'd move some ammo into my other pockets, things like that. So there's things you're going to readjust, reconfigure once you actually get on the move. So don't think this is how you're going to 
across the terrain the whole time. In a general sense, the logic is stuff I don't need immediately is at the bottom of the bag. My bivy sack, stuff that I need for sleepy time, my reading materials, uh, my soap, my sanitation, my mess kit. If you're going to sit down for supper, that's probably uh, a good time to take a break. In which case, you'll have one minute to get into the bag and actually get to the bottom and get your mess kit and, it's, and your spices and etc. Make a cup of coffee, whatever you want to do, right? But stuff that you need to be immediately available is towards the surface. For example, our first aid medical stuff is right on top. I got my survival pistol up here. It's a Ruger Ultralight 22 pistol, very accurate, with a lot of ammo. I can carry a lot of ammo that doesn't weigh a lot, and that'll feed me for a long time if I know how to shoot the pistol. <laughs> so we'll show you that in the second video. Um, so let's take a look at how this thing is constructed and then we'll show you generally how it works. So we got a lot of different places where we can cinch up. You can store a lot more stuff outside of here if you wanted to with these straps, but typically you can get into it. You can go like this. Now I have immediate access to my ammo pouches dropped out here. Uh, I have 100 rounds here. And I have access to the top of the bag here with a pulse, with a cinch right here. And if I don't want to go through the cinch, like if I have this in the way, I can use the zippers and get into the side like so. And we'll show you that in the upcoming videos of how we have it configured. Um, and if I want access to the rifle, let's go ahead and set this thing up on its end real quick. And then one of the nice things about it is it actually has handles in smart places. Um, if you need to pick it up, it's awkward. There's some handle on the side here. You can pick it up from the side. You can drag it around. You can move it around. Uh, this one does have a handle on the back side. So we'll roll it over. And thank you, Mrs. Rex. And I'll turn it towards the light so they can see. This is the back side of the bag, okay? Now here's the top part of the rifle. This is the buttstock. This is actually encompassed in the secondary sack system. Now, if I want to get this rifle out, I'm going to have to dump this deal. So go ahead and balance that real quick. I'm just going to unsnap here and here. And this is going to go bye-bye. Yep. Okay. And then the sleeping bag is gone. And then I have immediate access to my primary weapon right here. And that is the World War III battle rifle. So I'll set that aside for a second. So once I have my rifle out, I can go ahead and throw the bag down. And now I could use this rifle and I could actually use this as support for the weapon. I have my toe support here. If I need additional support on the toe, I just simply unclip that and I can use this bag as support. If I need a pillow, well, here we got a big sleeping bag, right? But I also do get a little bit of cover from this. This is really loaded with a lot of stuff. Um, I don't know if it would stop all rounds, but small arms fire would slow them down a little bit. And it depends on what kind of other cover you take use of. But it does give you a little bit of support so you can go right over the top. Everything I need on the right hand side over here, my ammo, so I can reload um, very quickly. I can reach over with my right hand and uh, reload the rifle. I have my rangefinder immediately accessible on this side of the bag. Everything I need to, to fight. Once I'm done, I can simply slip the rifle back into the back here. Now this bag that you just saw me pull off here that was holding the buttstock is actually for load bearing. If I cinch this down tightly, the buttstock of the rifle will be tightened up against this bag and the toe, or the bottom of the bag rather, is very, very strong where the muzzle of the rifle goes. And so if I set this bag down gently on the ground, on the muzzle, all the weight of this pack is being transferred onto, if I wasn't to use the thing I just showed you, you can also just stick the rifle in here like so and uh, get it in there. Thank you, dear. Okay. And you can strap it down like so, so the weapon's accessible. And we did walk around like this for a while with it, but I did find it useful to have that other piece, not just for keeping everything clean and keeping the water off of it, but for load bearing, proper load bearing. So let's take a look at the sides and some of the construction here. Let me come around the other side real quick. So you'll see I'm taking all kinds of advantage 
of the little molly strapping you have. I buy pot extensions here, coming down in here. These cinches are built really smart. I have a fire starting kit on one side. Uh, that's immediately accessible. And I have my water filtration kit on the opposite side over here so I can get my water clean and I can light a fire. And when you cinch these up, it's tied in real good. You can get Western on it. And I am actually a man that breaks things very easily. You have handles everywhere. The handles are sewed on very well. A very nicely constructed pack. Another thing is to police up the straps that are loose. Back in my day, we used to use electrical tape to tie them up. These have little Velcro fasteners, which are pretty darn slick. You just undo the Velcro and then you can roll it up and Velcro it back uh, to cinch up your stuff. Let's look at the back side. Okay, this is the side that goes against your body. It's actually constructed very nice as well. I have a cinch here. And this mesh material is very soft. So in hot weather, you're gonna have plenty of breathability. Uh, you're not gonna get this uh, whole thing rubbed on you. And actually, when I put this on, it's very, very comfortable. It's not bad at all. Also down the lumbar in the back. And with a man with back problems such as myself, um, it was weightless once it was on. <laughs> Wrestling it on was a little different. But uh, the way it's constructed is very nice. And this is a very, very, very spongy material. Um, and it's uh, insulated in such a way also to wear an extreme cold weather gear. You're not going to lose your insulation properties because it's not totally compressing the insulation out of your, your, your parka. So it's just touching where it needs to to bear the weight load. And actually, this distributes the weight very evenly and it's very, very comfortable. It's, it's actually quite surprising with the 70 plus pound pack. With this on there, it's a few more pounds. But with the 70 pound plus pack, it's a very, very bearable load. And it's, uh, you can stuff all kinds of other stuff in with the rifle if you wanted. If you had a lower profile rifle, you could put a shotgun back here and a 22 rifle. You could put your AR back here very easily. It's plenty wide enough for any of those type of weapons. Uh, very, very nice system. I have immediate access to my top pouch, which I keep a lot of my tools in this top pouch. This is where my 22 pistol is. I have my tools. There is some molly up on top. And shoved in here, I have my carbon fiber bipod which is the same magnetic mount as on my tripod I have my weapons cleaning kit back here I keep this separate from everything else and we'll show you how we packed it up but in a general sense all I have to do if I want to get on top of it is I can uncinch it here and I have immediate access to my first aid stuff and then underneath that I have my poncho and things like that things that are important that you might need in a hurry but this whole thing is built very well. If I need to get at something at the bottom of the bag, I can zip it, unzip it on this side as well. And we'll have fun showing you how that's set up in the second video. But for now, we just wanted to give you an overview on how this is constructed. But there's no shortage of attachment points and it's built very, very rugged. I mean, I'm pulling on it, I'm treating it like a jerk. And uh, I humped it around for a couple days when I was out there in the bush doing my thing, and uh, it's built very, very nicely. Uh, this is one of the nicest uh, packs I've ever run, and it's perfect for a rifleman. If you're a person that carries around a rifle and all the other stuff that goes along with it, all that weight adds up, especially the peripheral equipment, plus survival equipment, plus extreme cold weather equipment, plus fishing tackle, and uh, everything else you're gonna need. It's amazing that it all is just like perfectly configured uh, to hold all that kind of stuff. So they thought this one out good. So if you're a precision rifleman or if you need a bug out bag, this is a great way to go. If you're a, a hunter up in the mountains and you have to have one pack for everything, you don't have to load it up as heavy as I got mine. Um, I'm planning to live out there for potentially months on end. If you just want a three day pack, this is gonna be way lighter, configured way different. In the next video, I'm gonna show you the complete layout. And then in the third video, we'll show you how to pack it up. You really thought you'd get away with it, big guy? Got it? <laughs> 
Alpha 9 or Tango 1 3, this is Pirate Lizard King. Indexing this solution for 7. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Target's got good cover. It's a danger space for a headshot at TRP-5. Hi, Mom. It's me and my pals. Say hi, guys. Hi, guys, Mom! <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, man. You're shorter than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> These are super.